Hello everyone, this is Timothy Youngs of Digital Apothecary, and today I thought I'd do an interesting video on what is digital health, because this is something actually has been coming up a lot, it's like, what exactly is this topic when I talk about it? So I thought I'd do a quick overview, just as an introduction, and I'll probably do future uh, videos that go into detail about each category as we go into it. So I'm on here on basically the FDA's website, which goes over about what is the different sections of digital health. And um, I would say it's a great starting point. I reference this a lot just because the FDA has a lot of stuff on here. Um, and you can see what uh, the FDA is up to. So for instance, they have a digital health uh, innovation action plan. They have a pre-certification uh, pilot program going on. So there's all this stuff that's basically in action at this current time. And you are welcome to read through those. Like you can go up here and read this digital health um, innovation action plan. It's eight pages long, but I think it gives a good idea about what the FDA is very interested in. But in any event, um, just jumping down into it. So what? why is the FDA um, passionate about digital health? Like, why are they so big? I really think it was really good for like the past administration for um, uh, well, Scott Golia uh, and his uh, ideas about digital health. I think he was really huge in pushing this, and I think the FDA is going to keep on this. Uh, they're hiring people in this space. But what it boils down to is digital health. The reason why, you know, if we look at this in terms of essentially what they're so passionate about is this. Um, they really see that digital health is going to help reduce inefficiencies in care. It's going to improve access, reduce costs, increase quality, and make medicine more precise for patients. So, you know, if we talk about each of these in detail, so reduce inefficiencies, what does it mean? Like interoperability, the way that data can work together seamlessly and put into place what we can collect. You know, it goes beyond just EHRs, it's also the integration about these different systems talking to each other, objective information being shared across different platforms. Imagine if we can see medication adherence um, for remote patient monitoring about how well they're doing with uh, their disease, history, wearables and such. That's huge. Uh, improve access. How? Basically, more people can share their data and we can access it easier. And this goes along with the idea is this can then reduce costs and increase quality. I kind of look at these two things as more or less hitting our rural populations or hard to reach populations. All too often, you know, clinically, if we look at patients, they sometimes can't even get to a clinic because logistics basically prevent them. They don't have a ride. They don't have a means of doing that. But in this day and age, almost 80% plus of people in the U.S. have a smartphone. So, you know, telemedicine now shoots up using data um, resources to help basically collect information. You know, blood pressure. Can't do it at the clinic. We'll just have a remote uh, blood pressure measurement tool out there that patients can utilize and then we can like mail it to them we can virtually set them up we can actually send a technician if needed to but that these are all you know possibilities that we are now uh, embracing and i think this at the end of the day with all this data collected from individualized patients we now basically can help make it more precise for patients overall and that really is kind of the huge framework that i think the fda is kind of embracing with digital health now you know, what is exactly digital health? If we kind of like go with what the FDA is kind of looking at here, these are some different categories, but you know, we have all this. So wireless medical devices, um, those are very all over the place. I would say one example would be, let's suppose like the Apple Watch. So if we talk about the Apple Watch here, you know, what can it do? It can detect uh, atrial fibrillation due to uh, detecting um, heart rhythm. Um, based on what the Series 4 watch came out with. And who's to say what else will come out? Um, we also have like a live core, as I mentioned in the past, to detect potassium levels potentially as they're studying it more. But the sky's the limit. We have a number of um, wearable devices coming out that can do many things, detect sleep, uh, brain waves. They can detect uh, physiology data, uh, movement. I mean, that's big. Um, mobile medical apps, this is the other thing. So what's a mobile medical app? Basically, FDA has a whole other um, document on what is and is not a mobile medical app. So if an app tells you um, when to take your medication, like as a reminding feature, it's not really a, technically a medical app at that point. It's more like a fancy reminder, but suppose it can read your influence uh, to be more adherent, then it might cross into a realm of like digital therapeutics and such, because there's some evidence to back out that outcome. Uh, example would be like uh, Insulia for Volantis that can basically help you um, understand what insulin to give yourself in dose. Uh, health IT, telemedicine, uh, health IT is health IT. I don't think that really has changed. And there's just more rules and regulations are coming out forward. But telemedicine is big. I think this is something that is kind of going to be 
put into almost every single area for digital health because all this stuff kind of is going to have to go remote and virtual at some point. And basically that's going to stand out in terms of like how we would address and say, uh, this is that technology for this kind of endpoint, or this is what's going to measure for uh, that. And then you need to communicate it for someone. And, you know, can we do it through a smartphone? Can we do it through a laptop, a computer with just a computer, um, you know, with this, uh, all this other stuff like um, for, you know, the video cameras there, the sound systems there, perfect. Let's just talk to someone instead of having to drive out somewhere for 30 minutes, wait in the office for 15 to 30 minutes to talk to a physician for 15 minutes and then drive back home. I mean, no one wants to do that. And even with the growth of urgent care centers and other things, I think brick and mortar kind of for a lot of chronic disease management is going to kind of go to the wayside because of telemedicine. Uh, medical uh, device data systems, um, that is what it is. Um, you got MDD, MDDDS is kind of uh, sometimes shortened as. Uh, you got medical device interoperability. This is what I talked about before in terms of having all this stuff work together and kind of talking to each other so that all this information is going across seamlessly. I think CMS is doing a lot here in terms of trying to push this if those that aren't really getting up to speed are going to be really cut out or penalized at some point here. Software as a medical device is about the same. General wellness. I mean, think about this. General wellness is very kind of like a broad term, but what is that? Is, is that like a Peloton, for instance? Is that something else like that? Like home stuff? Um, I think this is one area that we'll probably see more terminology come out at some point, just trying to clarify what that exactly is. And cybersecurity is always a big one. We've seen a lot recently um, with Facebook, Google, uh, even like voice assistants with their data being stored and such. That's really something we need to be concerned about because just imagine if we move to the point where like Amazon Alexa is helping us with our health. But if it's recording and storing all the information, if you're talking about HIPAA information or even just like medical stuff that's being passed out by a patient, as you can imagine, you probably want a good amount of cybersecurity present there just to make sure that that stuff doesn't get released and compromise the patient's health or is used for a not so positive purpose. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, so I mean, to me, this is just some of these things um, that the FDA is kind of targeting. I, I expect this list to grow with time and get bigger because there are definitely more areas. I mean, digital therapies isn't even on this list, but I kind of, but that's software that's kind of getting bigger and it's kind of touching multiple areas. So when you think about digital health, the big one is, I think, key in on, you know, this whole idea of how technology is being utilized in healthcare. And I think more or less, though, we get to this point with where the FDA is stopping and going into, is especially talking about evidence, you know, what supports um, any claims that are being made by a company, what's proposed out endpoints going to be. I think these are going to be very huge, especially when you even get to, um, let's say, labeling inf indication for certain products and what they may accomplish. Like if you have an app that's going to do remote cognitive behavioral therapy management for substance use disorder. I mean, you probably want some good amount of research out there to show it does that. But then who's your target patients? Who's going to be the ones that benefit most from? Um, even evaluation of data afterwards, you know, you think about your traditional um, clinical studies, you know, got phase one, two, three, four. Um, and like, you know, four is often like post-marketing evaluation. So what goes on for a post-marketing evaluation for this technology? Also, you know, let's imagine we talk about clinical studies. If you use this device for that, but then that device falls off the market, can you sub in a new device? Like, where does that fall into place? So these are all like really interesting things that are coming about. And I think in digital health, I think the FDA has a huge area to basically try to figure out and like finagle in terms of how they're going to define it. Um, so the one thing also I would say is just to follow also with the FDA is that pre-certification model that they're pulling out. Um, they have a bunch of stuff that's going on in terms of guidance, in terms of what is the digital health content and um, what falls under there. And there's a lot to read here. Um, so, I mean, if you're in thinking about even getting into this field, there's a lot of catch up now. It, I think the wild, wild west space for digital health is kind of waning in some ways. I think it's growing in some areas where we just don't know what to do because they're new, um, but I think in some other areas, we're finally getting point, to the point where we have more guidance. So like mobile medical applications, I remember writing about mobile medical apps back in 2011, 2012, and it was like, what is a mobile medical app? And the FDA took years to come out with something. So it was, I remember that uh, time period being very, very much a anything kind of goes. They have a lot of people claiming that they're this versus that. One example right now is digital therapeutics. I love the space, but you have all these people saying, I'm a digital therapeutic or I have a digital therapeutic product out there. But what exactly is a digital therapeutic? Depending on who you talk to, it actually may not be what a lot of people propose it is. Um, 
And that's been very interesting. I've had people and founders and startups, you know, when they talk to me about their products to say, oh, this is a digital therapy. But I look at it and just think, I don't know if that is truly based on what I kind of go on as a guidance in terms of the digital therapeutics alliance, for instance. But it's, it'll be fascinating to see where this stuff all ends up in the end. So anyway, these are just different areas of digital health. Um, if there's an area that you would like me to kind of detail more, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably just be chipping away at this and giving examples of companies in a space and why I think they're relatively interesting coming up. So this is Timothy Yonks from the Digital Apothecary. Take care and have a good day.